start this uh, bike. Really easy starting for a 1985. Today we're going to do a little bit of a ride on the 1985 Honda Elite. As you guys know, I restored this thing from a bag of scooter parts. And today I'm going to ride up to Olney because I am meeting with the guy that sold me this bike. You know, he's a really good guy, so and he's got a uh, Honda Elix, Elix, Helix. And I've never seen one of those. It's kind of funny you see people with their masks on inside their cars all by themselves. That's all coming back, it seems. Anyway, we're at the McDonald's here. That's where we're gonna go. Hey man, how's it going? I like that Helix. I haven't seen one of these in a while. Is that right? Actually, I've never seen one in the wild. Yeah. What's going on, man? Yeah, good to see you, bud. That's the benefit of the Helix. Yeah. It's this big trunk. Hey, look at that. You got... Yamaha Morpheus. Oh, I like that. Yeah. yeah. I looked at one and this one had just more like boxy room. The other Morpheus is more like stretched out. Yeah. Like, oh. So that is the Honda Helix. Helix. Pretty cool bike. 250 cc's. You just look deep. Look at that. <clears throat> That's a much more comfy bike. It's kind of cool riding with the the owner that sold me the Elite 150. It's awesome. So he bought that Helix and then he's like, oh, you know, this is too much of a project, this 150, so I'm just going to sell it. And he was leaving his job at the time. But he seems to enjoy the Helix. It seemed, he got a great deal on it too. But it also was a project for him. Yeah, I think there's a very big difference between scooter riding and motorcycle riding. When you ride a motorcycle, it always feels like you have to kind of push the performance just a little bit. But on a scooter, it's just so much more relaxed. And it like feels like you're looking around more the idea of riding a scooter to me is more about relaxing looking around paying attention to your surroundings and in a motorcycle if i'm riding a super 10 right i could do that too but i feel that riding a motorcycle i always have to kind of like push the corners you know give it like a boatload of gas this thing is 40 years old isn't that incredible to uh to think that this thing is just that old and still kicking 1985 like i didn't even know when i bought this thing that it had the foot brake like normally scooters just have two brake levers rear brake and front brake right in the handlebars but this thing has it right in the floorboard for the rear the rear brake you know that's the thing with guys that complain about grass clippings it's not that grass clippings are not dangerous it's that you just have to adjust your riding and by the way grass clippings do have this thing it's like a hint whenever you're encountering grass clippings you smell them and they look green on the road so they're very difficult not to spot yeah i guess we got a lot of rain but yesterday was i think like 60 something degrees december 25th and today december 26th it's a little bit chillier but still really nice not you don't need electric gear but this is the beauty of the scooter riding is that when you have a scooter you have built-in wind protection this thing is just so incredibly good you know the elite 110 when i ride it it loses speed going uphill but this has a lot of character because of the engine feels a lot more like a motorcycle than a scooter the nc 700 has got a very similar scooter engine you know it's got a very lean forward scooter engine 
this one is very upright like a regular motorcycle a regular single cylinder motorcycle so it feels like it's got a lot of character there's hardly anybody on the road today I guess people are hungover or whatever I don't really like feel lacking for power on this but it is uh, a little bit deceiving because as soon as you start riding fast or you hop on the highway you go like oh yeah maybe a 250 feels like the perfect size for a single bike type of person you know there's always those debates online is like what is the perfect motorcycle and the thing is there's no such thing as the perfect do-it-all motorcycle I think probably the closest thing you can get is a dual sport but dual sports are just so uncomfortable but people ever take into account the whole scooter motorcycle option hear that engine roar A 1985 Honda would be on its last legs, but this thing with 4,000 miles is brand new. And it feels like it's brand new. The engine feels and the transmission feel really great. The only thing that needs a little bit of work is the chassis because a lot of the parts have been like rusted. You know, it is interesting to see a bike that's got 40, that's 40 years old, almost 40 and has 4,000 miles and I bought it with like 3,800 or something that is the one thing I admire people that get ADV bikes the people that tend to get ADV, bi ADV bikes are the ones that rack up tons of miles on their bikes even the BMW guys they're constantly racking up miles $2.94 oh, that is cheap awesome. Damascus is really nice it's the far reach of Montgomery County. So all these bastards have uh, to pay high taxes and they have to commute in to DC, which is really sad. Gonna do a little bit more, like maybe an hour more ride because um, he has to be back in town in, in I think at 12 or something. You know, that's my problem. I. I always push and push for more riding. This is really what I like with scooters, is riding at this speed, just uh, casually like looking around. You know, there's this book called Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. And he mentioned something <clears throat> that's very true. If you drive a car, you feel as if you're just an observer and not really participating in the actual like environment on a motorcycle and bicycle you feel the environment and I think that's what I really love about riding a motorcycle when you're driving a car no matter how cool the car is you feel removed and you feel like you're just watching TV through a glass window and that's the way he describes it that you're watching TV when you're in a car, you're watching TV. It, a lot of these guys, they get Porsches and Lamborghinis. And I keep thinking, you know, even with a slow motorcycle, it's a whole lot more interesting to ride a scooter, like a 50cc scooter, than it is in a car. I've never gotten into cars because of this specific reason that you feel so removed from your environment we're coming into the town of Brookville and our ride is coming to an end this is a really cute little area the Yamaha Morphos looks very weird it kind of sits down like a low rider and it's like fully stretched out uh, I'm not really sure how I feel about it I actually tried to buy a Morphos but it sold before I could get it this little Elite 150 really surprises me. It rides extremely well. I just can't sort out the noise that it's making, but it's almost 40 years old. It's incredible. It's really kind of an amazing feat of engineering that a Honda has done. They made bikes in the 80s and 90s, I guess like 70s, but I guess the 80s 
Honda really showed the world that it could make these mass-produced motorcycles that were more efficient, smaller, and more usable than the American and British counterparts. I believe that whole thing started in the 60s, but I don't really know too much about 60s bikes or 70s. You know, I, I do like the 80s bikes because it's an era where people just do not appreciate enough. It's uh, that's why you can get these bikes so cheap because they have that 80s styling and I guess people like the I guess everybody wants uh, more modern stuff for me I'm okay with the 80s especially if you get a good deal hey we're back where we started man what year is your elix what what year 96 ah uh, I think the last one they made was 2006 man I want to see that dash yeah look at that digital I can't believe like they made a digital even in the 80s it was digital yeah right right hey good riding with you man Look at that, there goes the helix. Look at that. Oh, he's got the historic plate and everything. That's the way to go. That's what I gotta do for this one. Yeah, and he's got all the baskets and stuff, but you see all the built-in luggage? It's awesome. I wanna see if I can squeeze on it out of here. Look at that, beautiful. That's pretty much the ride with my friend with the Honda Helix. He's the one that sold me this bike. Really cheap, gave me a good deal. It was a lot of work, but I think it was worth it. It's definitely worth it when you think about taking a bike that didn't have a good, <laughs> like it lived in a barn for years, I guess, and turned it into something that's rideable and commutable. It's amazing that way. Hey there, guy with a beard. It never ceases to amaze me, the quality of Hondas. They're just so good. It, they're just so reliable. I mean, this thing has got 4,000 miles from 1985 and the engine, transmission, just feels extremely smooth. I think the only downside is that previous owners have dropped it, so the plastic has been taking a little bit of a hit but I kind of feel like this is such a great deal. Like if you're looking as for a starter scooter, looking at the 1980s Honda Elites, I think you get some of the best deals ever on them because I've seen so many for under a thousand dollars. Top speed run right now. Car behind me chasing me, 55 miles an hour, going slightly uphill. This is also the beauty of scooter life. You could be racing. No one knows that you're racing because it always feels like it's a race. Top speed runs all the time. <laughs> I'm stuck here. The cops won't bother me.